is it at all possible for endless generosity and largesse, unending fortune and treasures, not to want an eternal land of bliss and a permanent place of banquet and permanent needy guests within it, and to regard it sufficient to have this ephemeral world and the ephemeral guests within it? Definitely not. This world cannot be a real place for generosity and largesse. It might be a place for only one part of a million parts of the generosity. This situation proves that there must be a permanent land where the generosity that is too big for this world will be manifest fully, and there must be permanent guests in that permanent land, and there are. We will examine this proof under two headings. A person who looks at this realm carefully will see that an infinite generous hand operates in this realm. Do you want proof for it? Then pay attention. To decorate the earth with so many embroidered works of art, to make the sun a lamp and the moon a candle, to make the earth a table of food and to fill it with the most beautiful kinds of food, to make trees with fruit bowls and to renew those bowls in each season, to make people eat honey, a sweet food out of a poisonous insect and where silk, a soft material, clothes out of the silkworm, to make animals like the sheep, goats, cows, a milk factory, to decorate dry trees like bones in the style of the Auris of Paradise, and mount very nice, embroidered flowers on their thin branches to create each creature out of nothing and to equip each creature with very valuable organs. They definitely show endless generosity and infinite largesse. We do not know. Is it necessary to explain the generosity in this realm? If man looks at himself only, not at the realm, and meditates the organs, devices, and feelings that he is equipped with, will he not approve that generosity and largesse? Then let us ask, who is the owner of this generosity and largesse? Who decorated the earth with embroidered works of art? Who made the sun a lamp and the moon a candle? Who made the earth a table of food and the spring a bunch of roses for this table? Who decorated the trees with flowers fruits and leaves? Who produces honey from a poisonous insect and silk from a handless insect? 
Who makes some animals fountains of milk for us? Who creates those endless creatures out of nothing and equips them with all kinds of organs and devices? Is there any answer other than God to those questions? Who, other than God, can treat the creatures so generously and meet all of their needs and grant them so many things? Who, other than God, has unending treasures and fortunes? The light of the sun proves the existence of the sun. Similarly, that unmatched generosity and endless largesse shows us and proves the existence of the being who is Jawad, very generous, and Ghani, rich, and who is behind the curtain. Now, it is time for the issue that this generosity necessitates the hereafter. Such endless generosity and largesse, unending fortune, and treasures and mercy want a permanent place of banquet and an eternal land of bliss that is permanent and desired and that contains everything. It definitely wants those who enjoy that banquet to stay permanently in that place of bliss so that they will not feel pains due to separation and death. The cessation of pain is pleasurable, so too is the cessation of pleasure painful. Such generosity does not want people to suffer such pain. Therefore, endless generosity and unending treasures want an eternal paradise and eternal needy people. Endless generosity wants to give people endless grants and bounties. Endless grants and bounties want the continuation of the existence of the person who receives them. A small pleasure that lasts short and that gets bitter with death is not appropriate for the requirements of such generosity. That endless generosity wants endless largesse and the permanence of the people it will bestow bounties upon. However, in this guest house of the world, people disappear quickly. They taste a tiny part of that generosity and grant, get up an appetite, but leave the world without feeling full and satisfied. Then there must be another land that is permanent and the permanent guests of that land must be served and granted endlessly so that the generosity will be manifest fully. Now, let us meditate again. What we have learned about this proof in the form of items. 1. There seems endless generosity and limitless largesse in this realm. 2. That endless generosity and largesse proves that there is a being and his unending treasures 
behind the curtain. 3. Unending treasures and endless generosity want to bestow upon people limitlessly. 4. The guest house and the needy people within the guest house must continue to exist for the continuation of the endless bestowal. 5. The world cannot be the guest house we are mentioning because it is ephemeral and the guests within it are ephemeral too. 6. Then there must be another land. There must be eternal guests in that eternal land and the owner of the generosity that is visible must bestow on his eternal guests in a way that fits him. 7. Then it can be said that to deny the hereafter can only be possible by denying God Almighty and His generosity. To deny God and His generosity can only be possible through closing the eyes and not seeing the generous treatment before our eyes, and through the mind denying what the eyes see, which is not possible for sane people. In short, the existence of the hereafter is as definite as the existence of the generosity. A person who cannot deny one, cannot deny the other one either.